In his first inaugural address, Thomas Jefferson articulated a vision for peace, commerce, and honest friendship with all nations, entangling alliances with none. But how did he think this could best be accomplished? In this video, I'll explain the Sage of Monticello's most important political ideas. Number 1. Federalism Jefferson believed in a governmental system where political power was decentralized, a view that preceded the birth of the states themselves. To Jefferson, the British Empire was a federalist system, and the chief colonial connection to Britain was the common monarch that served as executive. Most famously, he was the primary author of the Declaration of Independence, which severed the states from all ties to the British crown. The document stressed that each state was free and independent, each with the power to levy war, conclude peace, and do all the things that independent countries did. He was also the author of the Kentucky Resolutions of 1798, which expressed that the states were not united on the boundless principle of unlimited submission to their general government. Instead, Jefferson wrote, the Constitution was a compact among the states, where specific powers were delegated to the federal government, leaving the remainder to the states themselves. A nullification of any act deemed unconstitutional by the states, he wrote, was the rightful remedy. Jefferson recalled that each state, as the creators of the Constitution, also created the federal government by extension. Therefore, each state, not the federal judiciary, had the independent authority in the last resort to determine whether a law was constitutional or not. If a law was deemed unconstitutional, the state had the power to thwart its enforcement within its boundaries. In addition to his vision for a decentralized republic, Jefferson opposed policies that would bring about political nationalization to the detriment of the states and the Constitution. In his first inaugural address, he declared that the states were the most competent administrations for our domestic concerns and the surest bulwarks against anti-republican tendencies. Number 2. Religious Liberty Jefferson arduously supported the free religious exercise for all. To this effect, he penned the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom, which guaranteed each Virginian freedom of conscience, prevented all from having to subsidize any religion, and undermined Virginia's Anglican established church. Through the iteration that the U.S. Constitution had produced a wall of separation between church and state, Jefferson meant that the government couldn't interfere with the free religious exercise and worship of its inhabitants. Contrary to modern sensitivities, he didn't mean that representatives were prohibited from carrying the religious convictions into office, nor did he contend that the system barred religious symbols from public areas. Number 3. Anti-Monarchism Jefferson came to deny the efficacy of monarchy, believing republicanism to be the only rightful alternative. As a statesman in Virginia, he led the charge to end monarchical practices such as primogeniture, a legal precept whereupon the oldest male was always granted the entirety of an estate. He also supported the abolishment of entail, a principle that prevented property inheritance from being redistributed. Like Thomas Paine, he came to the view that hereditary monarchy was morally illegitimate and destructive to the rights of mankind. Titles of nobility, pomp and circumstance, and political power through birthright were all things that Jefferson dreaded. His inclinations against monarchy stretched even to personal habits. Jefferson discontinued the pageantry adopted by his predecessors, choosing instead to walk to his inauguration in plain garb, end presidential processions and dances, and even conceal his birthday from the public. Number 4. Humble Foreign Policy Like George Washington, Jefferson believed entering into alliances would cause a country to inherit all its allies' enemies, deplete its treasury, and threaten the liberty of its citizens. In his eyes, a non-interventionist course was best, and it was best to avoid war at all if possible. Along these lines, he pledged in his inaugural address to engage in entangling alliances with none. He displayed this propensity late in his presidency. Going to sweeping lengths to keep the United States out of the Napoleonic Wars, Jefferson signed the Embargo Act of 1807, which prevented all trade with England and France. It was truly the low point of his presidency, destroying the maritime economy of New England, but Jefferson earnestly believed it would avert war with both Britain and France. Number 5. The Right to Alter or Abolish One's Government As an admirer of John Locke, Jefferson affirmed that government's sole duty was to protect the life, liberty, and property of its inhabitants. Going beyond this, he thought, permitted the people to replace their government with a new one. A 
Additionally, he believed in the right of a sovereignty to sever its connection with an existing government. Even as talk of secession broke out in New England in 1816, Jefferson wrote, If any state in the Union will declare that it prefers separation to a continuance in a Union without it, I have no hesitation in saying, let us separate. In my book, Compact of the Republic, I told the tale of the Jeffersonian tradition and explained how it was undermined throughout the course of the early Republic. I'll include a link to my book below in the show notes. I'll also include links to the best works on Thomas Jefferson. Thank you for watching History in a Nutshell. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos.